All right, so today we are looking at the next section, which is weighted graphs and networks. So a weighted graph, and here's a, a diagram here. Um, so weighted graph, as the information says here, um, is just one like this that has um, some numbers on it. So, so there's numbers here, A to B, they've got the number 12. Um, and so this is a weighted graph. So, I mean, this may be, could be time, could be you know, distance, could be a number of, of different things. All right, so all a weighted graph is, is, you know, a graph that has uh, numbers on each of the edges. <clears throat> and those numbers on the edges give us some information. So for this one here, for example, we want to find the shortest path from A to D, so this might be you know, distance, for example. So we want the shortest path from A to D. Let me turn the comments on so I can do a bit of drawing on it. So here we go. So A to D, so we're starting here and we're finishing here. And so we want to know the, the path, shortest paths, all right? So uh, what can we do? We can go from A, uh, let's go down, down around this way through F first. So we can go A to F, and from F we could go to E, uh, then we could go to D, we could get there that way. And uh, if we look at that, A to F is 7. Uh, to E plus 9, 16 plus 11 is uh, 27. Or instead of going to E, we could have gone up to C and then to D. And uh, so 7, uh, 15 plus 13. Is 28. All right, so there's a bunch of different ways. Uh, there's another alternative here going to F. Um, we can go to C. Instead of going straight to D, we can go to E and then to D. To E and then to D. And then when you add all of those up, 7 plus 8 plus 5 plus 11. You get 31, because I've prepared one earlier. All right, so, and that's exhausted all the possibilities of that way. But we could go up this way to B. So we could go to A to B. And then we could go to C to D. And then uh, when we add that, 12 plus 6 plus 13. 12 plus 6 is uh, 18, plus 13 is uh, 31. Or we could go A to B to E, whoops, to E to D. And uh, so 12 plus 20, 32 plus 11 is 43. And uh, A to B to E to C. To do, and uh, when you do that, because I've prepared one earlier, that's 50. All right, so when we look at all of these, looks like the first one that, um, that I had up there, this one here, A to, A to F to E to D is our shortest at, at 27. All right. Um, now, you can, so it's fairly time consuming up it and, and not overly, um, I would say scientific is not quite the right word, but what we really want is some sort of way of, you know, shortcutting things. All right, because if we have to go through and figure out every single pathway, it's going to be a lot of mucking around. But so partly you can go, all right, so A to F is 7, A to 
B is 12. So it's probably not going to be an A to B option that should be the shortest. It's more likely to be the A to, a to uh, F option that is going to be the shortest. All right. Um, and the calculations actually show that. So all of the way these ones A to F's, well, there's one that's 31 and 31 that's the same, but the others are all, they're all shorter than, than these ones. All right, so we, we'd like to have some sort of way that we could methodically work through it. And uh, there is a, a method called Dijkstra's Shortest Path Algorithm. And uh, Dijkstra's Shortest Path Algorithm um, helps us work that now. There's, there's two ways that we can set out uh, Dijkstra's. And when I say Dijkstra's, it's pronounced, when you pronounce his name, it's pronounced D Y K E Dijkstra. All right. That's how we, we pronounce the guy's name, European names. All right. And so Dijkstra's algorithm, it gets used for, you know, GPS. That's how GPS works this algorithm. Um, and then there's, there's kind of a short, on the website there, there's a, a definition sheet, which kind of has a look and says, the, you know, kind of algorithm, kind of a way it's, it's written. You can have a look at that. If it makes sense to you, great. If it doesn't make sense to you, then you just leave it aside. You don't really need to, uh, to know those. All right, so this is the first method I'm going to use. Then I'll do another video with the second method. Um, and again, not necessarily one's better than the other, just depends on which uh, one makes more sense to you. All right, so here we go. He's using the graph below. Dijkstra's algorithm will find the shortest path from A to every other vertex. All right, and so here we are. We've got A, B, C, D and E. It's an interesting why I've done that, but anyway, not to worry. Set up a list of visited and unvisited vertices. So this is one way of doing it. So my visited vertices at the moment, I've gone no, none, nowhere. So I'm starting here at A. All right, my unvisited vertices. So at the moment, all my own, they're all A, B, C, D, and E. I haven't visited any at the moment. All right, so we're starting because we're starting A. We're starting A, here we go. Here's a table, the shortest distance from A and the last visited. All right, so the last visited um, means what one I visited before I went to A. All right, so A here. And of course, from A, A is zero from A because it's at A. All right. And so from A, then I can visit every vertex. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm starting here at A and I'm visiting every um, vertex. So A to B is six. There it is. To C, I want to get to C. All oh, right, so A to B is six, and the last visited, that's what I should have got here. So to get from B to B, what did, where did I go? Well, I just went straight from A to B. So my last visited was, um, was A. I went there from A. All right, so here I am now at B, and I want to go to C. So I can go to C down here, and so I'm going another five. So I'm going to now to C. Where have I gone to C from? I've gone to C from B, and I went another five, so it's 11. 
All right, so I'm going from A to B, and then to C, and that's a distance of 11. All right, D, so when I come back here, if I'm going to D, well, there'd be other ways of going there, but makes sense here, we're going straight there, and that's a distance of one. Distance of one, and where did I come from? I came from A. All right, and then E. All right, to get to E, well, if I'm now at D, well, it could be B, doesn't matter, either one. Let's go, let's go from uh, from D. Seems, you know, I just went from B to D, so here I am, I can go there to E, and I'll go another one. So I came from D, and I went another one, so that's two. All right, the question is though, was there other ways of getting to B? All right. Now, I haven't done anything much with my lists here. All right, there's a great big, on the notes that are on the website, there's a great big long explanation of, of what I'm doing now. It's only in words, so you can go and you can have a look at that if you like. Anyway, I digress. So B, B here, so you can check B. What, what can, how else could we get to B? Well, we can get by going straight, but we could also get there going around here. So we could go A to D to B. Now, if we go A to D, that's one, and then to B, that's two. So if rather than going to from directly from A to B, we went from A to D, the distance would be not six, but one plus two, which is uh, three. All right. Check anything else. C, C. Here's C here. All right. How else could we get to C? Well, there's a couple of other ways. Um, <clears throat> and the way we we got it from B, we could come from E. So C, get to C by coming from E. All right. So if we get to C from coming from E, and in a table here, E saying come past D to get there. All right, so we're coming past D to get there. One plus one plus five is seven. So for C, if we come from E, went round that way, it would only be seven. And so there's our, um, our shortest path there from that one. What else? No others that we can... Look at E, going around that way's further, going around that way's further. All right, so we've now got the shortest path from A to any of those other um, points. All right, so if we wanted to travel from A to C, for example, so if we want to go, say, for example, we want to go, whoops, let's... So I want to see that table. Uh, if we're wanting to go from uh, A to C, then to get to C, it says it's a distance of seven, shortest distance. Is seven and go to E. So we're going, okay, so we're gonna to go to C. And this is kind of what we would work backwards. C, where have we come from? We've come from E. So we come from E, down here to E. Where have we come from? From E, we come from D. And then so D, where have we come from? We've come from A. So the shortest distance between A and C is uh, A to D to E to uh, see. All right, so that's the first method of Dijkstra. As I said, there's another uh, video on the other, another method. Um, in the notes, make sure you go into the notes. Here's the notes there. You can have a look. Those notes that are on the website. Right, there's got a, an explanation of what I've uh, just done there in words. Um, 
So go and have a look through that. Also have a look through um, the other video with the other method and see which one you like um, the best. I've decided to make two videos rather than the, than the one. Um, just to try and differentiate between the two methods a bit more so you don't sort of mix them all up. Any questions that you need to know, um, email me for those. And uh, when you're ready, when we're ready, we're looking at uh, the 14D questions on your work plan. All right, so have fun.